Hi my fashionistas, welcome back to my channel. I know you're probably wondering where the hell I am because I usually film in my living room but I'm actually in my room today and I just wanted to see if a change in scenery helps. Um, so let me know in the comments down below if you like the white background better or if you think that the sofa was fine. just wanted to see if this was just a little less distracting. So today you guys all asked me to do this. I took a vote on Instagram. If you guys don't follow me, follow me now at Vibe with Laura. So I asked you guys what video you guys might want to see this week and you guys all voted on how I got a job at Condé Nast. So I was working as a fashion showroom assistant and after only three months of working there, I decided to resign from my position and I didn't have anything lined up I just knew that I didn't want to work there anymore I applied everywhere on indeed because that's where I use that's the site that I use to find jobs so I applied to a lot of different places and weeks went by and I kept getting declines every time I would look on my phone I would look directly on my emails and I would always see well we like you but unfortunately we're gonna go the other way for a while I felt really panicky because I felt like I wasn't gonna get anything because I was only at that job for a couple of months and I was thinking what job, what fashion job is gonna want somebody who only stood for three months, doesn't really have any other prior experience in fashion. Um, I was also working another job at the time um, as a Macy's vendor. So I did have a fallback. I wasn't completely jobless, but I did want another job. I didn't want just that job because it was more of like part-time work and not full-time. So I was looking almost every day for a new job. Even though I knew I didn't have enough experience, I still put my resume to Condé Nast. I got a notification message on Indeed, which was really weird and I usually find that to be like spam. So I wasn't really sure, so I clicked on it and I started to read it and it was like, hello, we're interested in an interview, blah, blah, blah. Um, I'm going to put the exact um, message in over here. <laughs> so it was like saying something like, um, we would like an interview with you, blah, blah, blah. And I scroll down and I see that it says Condé Nast at the bottom. And I was like, no way. After they had asked me to come in for an interview, I immediately responded. I was so mad that it was like three days had passed before I can even respond to them or something like that. It was like three or two days later. And I was like, oh my god, I, like, I wish I had seen it sooner. But I responded right away and I was like, um, well, I don't remember exactly what I wrote, but I could definitely show you guys if anything. But more or less, I said, yes, I would love an interview and I told her um, when it was best to come in for one. I was really nervous about what to wear and I had seen this video with Anna Wintour and she was saying something along the lines of dress like yourself but also dress professionally and that's how like she likes people like if they dress like themselves I could insert that video right here interesting to me how people dress when they come in for interviews and sometimes you feel they're wearing clothes that they just bought that morning or maybe the night before and not something that in any way suits their personality and who they are and I think what everybody should remember whether they're interviewing a Vogue or indeed anywhere that we're not hiring your wardrobe uh, your wardrobe is not going to be doing the job for you it's who you are. I'll always remember a young man who came in in a, in a dress and a handbag and I, I gave him the job on the spot. You have to dress for yourself and uh, it's the same for any job that you might be going for. I took her advice and just basically wore something that I thought would look professional. So I just went with a regular um, turtleneck and some plaid pants and boots with a little bit of a heel and then to kind of spice it up a little bit not spice it up but I wanted to wear something that had a logo on it that kind of shows like hey I am interested in fashion because I do know about these brands 
um, so I decided to wear my Canada Goose for that. It was winter time so I didn't really have anything too crazy. I don't think I wore a purse that day either. I think it was just that. So that was what I wore the day of my interview. It was super nerve-wracking. I was really nervous but excited at the same time. I think somehow the excitement beat the nervousness. When I got there, it's at the World Trade Center, so there's a lot of security guards. They had called upstairs for the woman who was going to interview me, and she said it was a little too early, that I had to wait. So I took that time to actually print out my resume since I didn't have it with me. So I put on my phone like nearby FedEx because that was like a place I knew that you could print things out. So it was only like, I think six minutes away from the actual um, place. So I ran all the way to FedEx, print, like printed out my resume just in time. And it took a while, honestly. It took like at least 10 minutes just to do all of that. And then it was gonna be another six minutes just to get back to the building. But I did all of that just in time. And I got back to the building. And when I got back, the security guard called upstairs again. And by that time, I think I was just like 10 minutes earlier to the interview. And so she allowed me to come upstairs. And when I went upstairs, I saw the team. I didn't really want to make too much eye contact with them because I didn't want them to just judge me just yet. I just kind of like smiled and was happy to be there. And one of the girls walked me into this room. And I honestly thought she was the person who was going to interview me. And I was like prepared for her to like ask me questions and she looked so friendly too so I was kind of happy that I had a friendly interviewer but she said no no <laughs> um, you're still waiting for the actual interviewer so she told me to take a seat and I sat there for at least five minutes um, I took off my jacket I put it on the chair and I was sitting down and I was just looking at an empty seat which made me really nervous <laughs> And I just waited and waited for somebody to come in. And so then finally, after I think five, six minutes, the woman who was gonna interview me stepped into the room. And it felt a little awkward since I was already sitting down. So I just got up and I shook her hand and I, I greeted her down and we sat down together. Um, and then she started to ask me questions immediately. She first. The very first thing she had asked me was, can I see your resume? And so I was so happy that I had printed it out like two minutes before that, before that interview. So I slipped her my resume right away like, yeah, I got it. It's right here. Here you go. <laughs> and so she took it. She looked at it and she was just like looking through it. And the way that she looked that day was just like wearing like a knitted cardigan with a regular t-shirt with her hair big and curly and she just looked so unimpressed by me. She just looked like she didn't even want to be there and it made me even more nervous but I was like okay don't worry don't like take her energy just like be yourself. This is probably like her trying to mess with me a little bit and so I just kept my same attitude like I'm nervous but I'm excited so she first asked me about my past experiences she went down through my resume and she asked me like oh what was this experience like what was that experience like and then she asked me how a magazine is different from um, social media and I believe my answer to that was just that in magazines, you get more creative visuals. So when people go out to take photos, they don't just throw you anywhere like how you would on social media. They actually take the time to preparate for the photo shoot and do it in a more grand way. And I believe that was my answer to that. Like just that, just like based off of images. And then she was like, okay, okay. And then she asked me who was my favorite fashion role model. And this was definitely a trick question. Like if you would just ask me that as like a friend, I would most likely just say Kim Kardashian because she is a fashion icon to me. 
and obviously that's not like the best person to choose because of her career journey and some people don't take her as seriously as others i take her seriously most people in the fashion industries do does take her seriously but not everybody does so i didn't want to choose her and it just seemed like a little too like predictable so i didn't end up choosing kim and I also didn't want to choose Rihanna even though again she is also a big fashion icon I didn't want to choose her because again she also felt a little too predictable because a lot of women look up to her and I didn't want to choose anybody I knew other people would definitely choose in like a heartbeat so I went with somebody who was changing the fashion industry in a way that we hadn't seen before and somebody who was known so I ended up talking about Harry Styles. It was like the time of Matt Gala where everybody was talking about what he was wearing because it was feminine and masculine and not a lot of men were doing that at the time. So I ended up choosing Harry Styles for that reason and funny enough, a couple of months or I think a year later we had him on the cover of Vogue wearing a dress. So I think that was the perfect person to choose from so i told her harry styles and i told her why i just told you guys why so that was my reasons and so she just shook her head like okay whatever and she noticed that i was like a little bit nervous while answering some of these questions so she was like it's fine i'm not as scary as i look something like that i'm not as scary as i look and so i laughed and I think that's also my, what might have made her like me just a little bit more during that interview process because I think had I like been more nervous to laugh, it would have given her the idea of like, okay, this person is just nervous and she, you know, you can't be that nervous during an interview. You could be semi-nervous, but you never want to be like sweaty nervous. So I laughed at her joke and so we moved on probably asked me like two more questions about oh yeah she asked me where do i see myself in five years and i told her that i would like to work for the magazine at any position it's something that i've always wanted to do stuff like that i kind of just told her my aspirations and that was that and the last thing she had asked me and this was the closing of the interview she asked me do you have any questions for me now again this is a trick question because you're never supposed to say no definitely try to ask any type of question you can and the question that i had asked her was what was the day-to-day -day routine at the job then she answered and i just nodded and looked at her was i listening no because <laughs> at the at the moment i was too excited i didn't care i was like she could literally have me paint her nails for all i care as long as i got the job like that's all that matters so i listened a little bit of what she was saying of course but i was also a little too excited to really like process what she was telling me so i was like okay yeah that's great and then that was the end of that interview um i didn't shake her hand at the end because i shook her hand in the beginning and i just told her like thank you and to have a nice day she asked me for three references before i left and i said i would get that to you as soon as possible after that i called everybody i emailed called text all the employees that I had put on that resume. Some were really friendly about it, some weren't as friendly about it, but at the end, I got all three references by the next day. And after that interview, I went downstairs and all the security guards were like, you got this, you got this. And I was like, I hope so. And then I left and I called my mom immediately after that interview and I was like, mom, I don't think I got the job and she was like why what happened and i was just like i don't know like the lady just didn't seem like happy to see me <laughs> and my mom's like it's okay just do what she said at least she asked you for references because at the time i was so used to like people just hiring me right in the spot or declining me right in the spot so i just was never used to somebody saying like oh okay like i just give me references and we'll see 
so i was really like nervous because i'm like does that mean i got it does that mean i didn't get it so i was like okay okay just just do it just get those um references so the next day i got them and i didn't have her email so i didn't know where to send the references to so i tried calling a whole bunch of times nobody would answer i was getting really nervous until one day i just decided to send the references directly in indeed messages i was waiting for like a call and she called me and she was like okay um and she didn't seem like she didn't seem excited or anything she, again she just seemed like okay yeah um congratulations you got the job um, the starting salary is $15. It didn't seem like it was negotiable either. Like the way she said it was like non-negotiable. Like don't even try to fight me on it. It's just $15. So I was like, okay, <laughs> that's fine. $15, fine. That was like $4 less than I was getting from my other job. In that time, I didn't care about what the position was or how much I was getting paid because I was just really happy just to be there. So the official title that I had was fashion closet assistant. Maybe a day or two later, she had me come into the job and I met the team and I saw some of the team during my interview process, but I didn't meet the team yet. So I met the team, all of the girls were so friendly the day of, like they all wanted to know who I was, where I was from, my my sign, and all of these other things, and they were like very interested in knowing who I was. So after the first day, it's kind of like I don't know, just weren't as talkative. It was kind of like first day, yay! Second day, okay. <laughs> so after I met the team, um, I felt really excited about working there and honestly the first day it was so busy so they threw me right in it wasn't like you know here's some work and here's this it was like nope you work for us throw you right in and they did train me but it was like very intense training it was like it was like basically just doing the job but somebody holding your hand at the same time our job was just to return um, clothes from photo shoots so they would print out labels you would pick, uh, take one of the labels and then you would pick up all of the clothes from that label so if I picked up a label for let's say Louis Vuitton I would have to find all of the clothes for Louis Vuitton so then I would grab all of the clothes and put it on to a I don't even know what to call it like <laughs> oh yeah it's like this rack to like display the clothes like somewhere like how um american apparel had those like racks in the front of the store so we put the clothes on the racks and then we take pictures of those clothes just so then we can prove that those clothes were at the closet it was sent back to us and now we are sending it back to them and then after that we would have somebody come and check us from our team there was like four rows of girls who were also doing the same thing and then two girls on the computer to print out and the way that it would work it would be on rotation so some days you would be on the computer and some days you would be working with the clothes so whoever wasn't busy would come and check you and what checking means is just to make sure that every piece there is Louis Vuitton the girls that worked there a little bit longer than me would know that there was more pieces in other places of the closet so you wanted to get every single piece of Louis Vuitton like there was like no room to like mess that up like you needed every single piece like if there was like a pair of shoes on the ground that you missed that was also a big no-no so sometimes they would tell me like oh there's more pieces there like did you check and so i would gra grab more so that was the purpose of the person that was checking you they made sure that you had every single piece and they also made sure that every piece that was there was louis vuitton basically if you had louis vuitton and suddenly there was like a shirt from another brand like i don't know ralph lauren <laughs> and it was like hidden with the polo shirts of louis vuitton and then there was like um one ralph lauren there so the person that was checking you is supposed to make sure that that does not happen they're supposed to be like okay wait there's a ralph lauren piece here this is not supposed to be here then you put it back on the rack so that was like the whole idea of the job you were either on the computer or you were working on your feet for eight hours just grabbing clothes and I just want to like tell you guys that these clothes were extremely heavy at times like 
very very heavy clothes but when you have like garments and you have to pick up more than one it becomes very heavy a lot of the times like you will sweat definitely just be exhausted because you're carrying something every almost I want to say every 30 minutes because that's how, how long you were supposed to take doing that whole thing but sometimes you would get smaller um, smaller amounts so sometimes you uh, the longest you can take was like 10 minutes things are 20 minutes or 30 minutes 30 minutes was the longest the max you can do so when companies say fast environment this is what they mean you have to go extremely fast and you have to make sure that you are looking at everything and when they say must be detail oriented this is also what they mean like you cannot mess this up because it messes up everything if you mess it up so say I took Louis Vuitton and then I took Ralph Lauren but somebody else has another pickup for Ralph Lauren and they're on their way taking pictures and they already start to pack it up and then I have another piece of theirs and they're already on their way to sending it that's my mess up because I took their piece without them knowing and without me knowing really look to make sure that something like that does not happen so that also explains the whole other process of that is that after you take all of your pictures you pack up the clothing so they usually put it in a garment bag or if it's being shipped you put it in a box and then it's being shipped out to either another country or it is being shipped out domestically be prepared to learn about brands that maybe you haven't ever heard of and kind of go through if you do want this job or you do get this job go to vogue.com and go to vogue runway and just look at all of the brands that they have there because those those are all of the ones that you're probably are going to be working with and just make sure that you're saying these brands correctly they will correct you at the job sometimes they do laugh if you say if you like completely put your name and sometimes they're like nice about it and they're saying they'll say like hey that's not how you say it and you have to kind of listen out to how they pronounce brands sometimes if you've never heard of them before um, so that is one thing that i advise you to do if you really want to have a position as a fashion assistant so as far as what to wear while you're working at the job try wearing something that matches the magazine so this job i didn't get to say earlier but it's really my job was really general so we worked with every single publication so we worked with vogue we worked with gq we worked with teen vogue we worked with allure we worked with glamour we worked with w at the time and we worked for one other one there and i can't remember i'm so sorry because we barely worked with them so we worked for all of the publications but the main goal for that like the promotion there was supposed to be um working for a specific um magazine which would be way easier since we always had to like kind of organize by publication and by brand dress for the job that you want meaning look at the magazine and kind of mimic that character so if you want to work for vogue you had to go with more clean cut things if you want to work for gq that's when you can kind of do a little bit of the street style you want to work for teen vogue wear something that's more colorful every day wear knitted stuff wear um bright jeans wear things that matches that magazine so they'll notice that and sometimes it really doesn't matter because they'll put you wherever they can whichever position opens so honestly i would say just try to wear business casual as far as promotions go it's only really three promotions so there is lead so that is the manager of the closet logistics the person who makes sure sure that everything overseas is going as planned and then you have jewelry those are like the big three honestly i think the only way to move up as in like moving up towards a magazine you have to make lead i didn't know this at the time i didn't really understand lead because they have the same title and they get paid the same amount but 
basically you're the chosen one of the closet it means that the boss probably really likes um, the way that you you're working and your worth ethics and there usually is two leads in the closet at the beginning of the job there was two but at the end of the job there was only one so I didn't really understand that but that is like your ticket to getting into a specific magazine now there's always a way to try to do that in the beginning like if you if you already have some experience i would try to automatically get a job from the direct magazine because it's a little less of a hassle if you can do that if not then that's fashion closet assistant is your introduction to um magazines you don't if you haven't gotten um a promotion within a year I suggest looking at something else in the fashion industries. Um, definitely try to get a job somewhere else before you leave that job. Only because if all three positions are full, like filled, there's no room for you to get a promotion anymore. You don't want to get continue to get paid minimum wage as an adult. Um, the best option is to leave the job so then that way you could get paid a little bit more. You're better off somewhere else and then if anything going back into the company if you even can do that but it's better to do that than force yourself into that company because then something bad would happen or then you'll have a bad a bad name or a bad attitude like man i deserve a, a promotion but you're not gonna get it because everybody else got the promotion so just leave and that would work out a little bit better for you it also try to leave in a positive note try to become friends with the boss and so then that way she can help you get back in the company if anything or try to get a reference from her or something so then that way when you leave it's not on bad terms and then you can come you can go back to the company if you want to that is all that i have for you guys today i hope that you guys enjoyed this video and learned something from it i hope this helps if you guys have any questions that maybe I didn't answer in this video feel free to comment down below I will definitely try to answer as many comments as possible so let me know if this was helpful and I will see you guys next Thursday bye